red lights are on and the race gets underway. Now, a big launch from pole from Warren Allen, so he launches into the lead. Good start too from Christian Walker. Uh, Roger Coy's made a bad start, so he's dropping back into the pack. But an excellent start from Chris Walker. It's Allen, though, that leads. Coleman's back to second, using the power of the K middle. There's contact there. 46 is going wide because of it. Gary Goodwin, but I think he might have uh, got it back into shape, which is good news for him. But it's the two Caymans back out front. Walker third, fourth. Uh, challenge that Bill K uh, James Cayley trying to come around the outside. He wasn't really involved in the battles yesterday, but he's right up there as the rest of the pack come through. Someone's had a spin to the right-hand side of our shot. Uh, there it is. The car that's facing the wrong way is 23, I think, which is the 944 of Stuart Ings. But he should get back going, Marcus. Yeah, the golf team Ings car, and that was 903 running at the back, uh, which is Ken Van Howen uh, with that spectacular supercharged uh, 911. But uh, out front in the thick of the action. See that there are, uh, I think there's four of the uh, Ashgood sort of martini striped uh, boxers in the, uh, in the race. One of them got a little bit uh, bingled yesterday. But uh, there we've got uh, the Warren Allen, Kevin Cayman, that's the yellow uh, repeater uh, lights flashing mm -hmm. in the background. And um, I, that might just be localised, let's hope so. Yeah, I wonder if that car hasn't got back going just yet uh, up at the hairpin. Hopefully it will do, though. As the pack uh, flow their way through. Oh, that's McHugh from the back of the grid. Jamie McHugh in 25 has passed a lot of cars. He looks like he's probably up about a dozen places already. Yeah, so that's uh, we've seen quite a lot of that this weekend. Quick drivers from the back making strong progress. There's so lots of corners on this 300 circuit, aren't there? Lots of places you can dive from, from the opposition if you're much quicker. This is a good opening lap from Dominic McGee, uh, McGee, new driver. He's got a big clump of boxers chasing him. Oh, there is um, 23 in, so he didn't get back going, but he has got the car off the road. So hopefully, as Mark has said, localised yellows perhaps for a lap, and then with a bit of luck, we'll be able to carry on racing, perhaps just with a, a warning board for the that's, drivers. That's off on the inside, isn't it? Oh, we've got somebody autocrossing there. Now who is that? One of the boxers. Black car with a blue tail. Let's see if we can pick up on that uh, in a moment. I wonder if it was the uh, if it was Dominic McGee who I said made a good start. He wouldn't. Oh no, he's there still. It's I the think. one running behind McHugh. That's uh, the car that's uh, had the moment on the grass. There we go. That one here. Right, that's 40, wasn't it? I think. Uh, which was Dan Sylvester. Was it? Uh, in the car that uh, James Harvey shares with him. He's not showing on the screen, so I wonder whether there's a transponder issue there. Yeah, I think it's the 40 car. For some reason, we're only getting one driver being shown on our ah, screens okay. rather than <laughs> who are double driven, which is yep. going to get confusing, I imagine, over the course of this race. And Sylvester's pulling wide, so perhaps uh, that off track excursion was uh, rather than a mistake. A problem with the car is indicating left. Looks like that car may not uh, go much further. Yes, so. towards the end of Corum, he was driving on the uh, uh, on the grass. Yes, I think uh, unless, that, unless that sorts itself out, it's uh, going to be for the pits before the pit window opens. There's Jamie McHugh. So he got to 13th, didn't he, from the back of the grid? Uh, he's gained more position since then. Though he's ahead of Roger Coy, I see. Uh, so there's Dominic McGee, who originally made a good start. He dropped to sixth, and he's lost quite a few positions since then. He's behind uh, the Gary Goodwin car and ahead of the Crago uh, machine, which I think is Daniel uh, Crago for this one. And then McHugh, who's going to find his way through. McHugh normally drives a front-engine car, but it's in this uh, rear-engined uh, Boxster today. There's uh, one of the Ashgood cars, 72, that's James Brody. He's ahead of Lucas Hutchings, who's uh, had not the best of starts, the Brands Hatch winner last time out. All the races before that were won by uh, Steve Hewson, but uh, his uh, car, well, the car he raced, is going to be in the hands of Matt Fazy and Club Enduro later on today. Across the line come the leaders. The gap between Warren Allen and James Coleman is just like yesterday. It's half a second. Quicker than yesterday, though, from Warren Allen. A 2 minutes 10.27, so a few temps quicker than yesterday's pace. Christian. That's, that's for the higher fuel load as well. Yeah, good point. We've seen quite a few quicker laps today. I wonder if lower, well, now the sun's starting to shine. Up to an, oh, big challenge on the contact. Squeeze, and that's a, another tab between those two. The two Caymans out front have touched. And the 47 car just pinged the 
uh, ping the lead around. You know, sir, he waited for, for um, Aaron to get it going. I think James Coleman realised his mistake and very gentlemanly let him get it back going before continuing. But uh, if there was a brush yesterday and there was a little bit of angst, I think, after that, there this might be a bit more this time. This time it was on the tarmac yesterday, mm. on the grass yeah, exactly. at uh, Murray's. So Warren Allen still leads. Now we'll see how that uh, evolves. Now, with Christian Walker much closer to them, but still behind. John Walker four, Chris, Chris's dad. And then in fifth position is, um, is James Cayley, who's going well in the car that he shares with Bill. And then James Brodie is sixth, who's having a, a good run. And then Lucas Hutchings, uh, who was saying, not making such a good start this time. In eighth is um, Gary Goodwin. And I think Dan Sylvester did bring the 40 car into the pits. He's getting a track limit uh, warning, but I think he went off the track to let others pass. Yeah. So the third lap is going to be completed before too much longer. Having a look at uh, Roger Coy there. He's dropped to 13th. Just a couple of positions ahead of him is Dominic McGee. They've got Mark Callahan between them, who I think is making his debut this weekend in that boxer. And the leaders are back together as they turn their way through Coram. It's going to be a slow lap, obviously, from the two of them. But yeah, we were talking about the lap times, weren't we? Being a bit... Uh, Warren Allen has a big slide. Being a bit quicker today, potentially lower track... Uh, track temperatures a bit of damage to the Sylvester and Harvey car after that uh, opening lap problems as down out of the car but across the line come the leaders they lost seven seconds in that collision but they're uh, still going up front into Richie's corner they come now is James Coleman going to try again to go past down at the hairpin that's where he had a couple of goes yesterday again he looks to the inside so he's not uh, pulling out of that move uh, despite the incident on, on the previous lap they turn right uh, through the hairpin and uh, behind the, the Walker family. Then the shared Cayley family car. Lucas Hutchings there in sixth. His teammate behind James Brodie is starting to come under pressure from Gary Goodwin. Then Jamie McHugh is ninth. So that progress continues from the back of the grid. Jamie McHugh uh, a bit quicker than James Brodie, who is continuing to come under pressure from Gary Goodwin. Now, uh, Goodwin's got damage, hasn't he, to the front of his car, I think. Let's see if we can have a look at the 46 car down at the next corner. So possibly uh, some damage there, Marcus. Just looking in to see. The bonnet uh, rippled a bit. Yes, it is. It's pump, uh, pumped up, isn't it? It's uh, been deranged. Now, and was he involved with Dan Sylvester, I wonder? Yeah, possibly. I wonder whether that uh, it needs investigation back at the pits because it's... Uh, we're picking up air underneath the sides of that. It's still pinned at the bottom by the looks of things. Yeah, pit window pit windows doesn't open for six more minutes, so a long time to wait uh, um, to wait till then. Otherwise a lot more damage could be done. The 924s, a class four cars making their way uh, down here into the Wilson hairpin. Class four being led uh, at this stage. Uh, by the 115 car, so that is uh, Philip Waters, I think, started that in, with Cole Roslin. And he's 13 seconds ahead uh, of Darren Constant, then Steve Potts uh, fourth. So that uh, has rather spread out early on in this race. I see McHugh there at the back of a group on the screen catching this pair. And McHugh in the... Uh in the splendidly sort of anti-camouflaged car uh, is now right with the 72. And that's James Brody in the Ashgood car and in 46 is Gary Goodwin who has got past as well. So they've both got past Brody, haven't they? James Brody, who I don't think has huge amounts of racing nowadays. Son of uh, Dave Brody, legendary touring car driver of 1980s. Oh, goes back before that. Remember him in his uh, Ford Escort long before you were born, Josh. <laughs> I think James was driving Dave's uh, car at the, the Super Touring meeting on, 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 a, on a demo at uh, Brands Hatch a month ago. Uh, but for James, uh, Jamie McHugh, he's still trying to get past Gary Goodwin. Gary Goodwin from Buckinghamshire. 
He's been racing uh, this boxer for a while now. He shares with his brother Michael. And Jamie McHugh still behind. He's having a little look to the inside at the Agostini hairpin. This is the battle for seventh place. But uh, no way to get through there for now. Just ahead of them, battle going on, I think. Uh, meanwhile, uh, a bit further back, we have a look at car one, which is Paul Hicks and his Cayman coming through. He is in a uh, lower position. Uh, something like 23rd, I think. But here are the leaders back together. And uh, James Coleman continues this chase of Warren Allen. They're still only three seconds ahead of Chris Walker, whose pace is really good. I guess Chris Walker knows he needs to keep pushing because he's aware that Colin Tester's going to get in one of the other cars later, so he's <laughs> exactly. got to build a gap. And Tester was super quick yesterday, as we'd expect, uh, from a very, very experienced uh, instructor. So here comes uh, James Coleman then, tucking into the slipstream. You'll hear those uh, engine notes. They race past us in the box. Dives down the inside. Uh, into Riches does uh, Coleman, but he's not quite close enough. It was gorgeous little show, single intent. Warren Allen holds on. It's a bit more defensive down at Wilson now since that incident a couple of laps ago. On par with their pace is Christian Walker in third. Yes, he's in the 211s as well. Both of the Caymans out front have been in the 10s, a 21027 27 for Warren Allen, the leader. The 165 and the 47, uh, James Coleman, a 210.30, so just three hundredths between them. Doing a great job behind is uh, Christian Walker. Yeah, pit stops and uh, when they happen will be pretty important here, getting as close to that 60 second minimum as they can. Oh, big twitch there coming out of the hairpin as James Coleman put the power on out of the uh, Agostini hairpin. They've got uh, lap traffic will begin on this lap because Ken Van Howen's 911 is just ahead of them. Coleman there telling us yesterday a new car to him um, this weekend, I think. They've got Van Howen's car that's sticking to the inside, so they'll have to go around him at the Williams corner. And potentially that's a benefit of Warren Allen, if anybody. And Van Howen did exactly what you're supposed to do. You just um, stick to your line and uh, let, the, uh, let the quick competitors find a way past you safely. That's exactly what you need to do. No point looking in the mirror and then darting around in a second guessing them. Here's the Crago family, 968. I think the Crago family are, um, who own the Charles Ivy um, firm nowadays, who back the championship. And I believe it's uh, Daniel, who I think is the son, who uh, drives today. Alvaro did the two sprint races yesterday. Dan Sylvester's car has gone back into the race after some work on it. Obviously many laps down. Uh, something like three laps down, there it is. So Dan Sylvester will get some more laps. James Harvey, the car owner, will drive it in the second half. And the leaders come through to complete another lap. Still only half a second between them. Christian Walker third. He's uh, lost about a second on that lap. There's a lot more traffic to deal with now, Marcus, yeah. on the next lap. It's interesting. James, Allen, uh, James uh, Coleman, behind Warren Allen, he uh, leaves his braking later uh, into Rich's corner. But uh, whether he gets the car turned and uh, back onto the uh, power doesn't matter. But their lap times are very, very similar. Couple of tenths in it only. Have we through. lost John Walker, who was fourth? John Walker hasn't come through. The pit window is not opened yet, so uh, it would be a problem if he has come into the pits. He had problems yesterday mm. in one of the races. Yeah, in the first race, and came from the back. Uh, up the order. So had lots of tyres spilled at the hairpin. I wonder if someone uh, gone for a spin or not. But uh, yeah, no, uh, no John Walker, I'm afraid. So up to fourth has gone Lucas Hutching. So he's managed to get himself up ahead of James Cayley. Yeah, and Jamie McHugh from the back to sixth now. His best lap time a one, uh, a two thirteen six last time round, which is quicker by a chunk than the car ahead of him. But he's currently about five and a half seconds behind it. Yeah, that's the car we're looking at now. The um, father and son duo, James and Bill Cayley, um, who tend to race um, more powerful cars in the Porsche Club Championship. So having a go in their Boxster this weekend, battling with Lucas Hutchings, who was new to the championship last year. 
He's done some Citroen C1 racing before, but a big step up to this Boxster and going well. And he then continues to be chased by James Cayley. Pit window is now open, 15 minutes into the race, so we'll see how quickly the leaders opt to pit. You're not going to have many chances, are you? It's going to be a four-lap window, a uh, ten-minute window in the middle third of the race. Yeah, that's, that, that's right. And uh, it gets pretty busy uh, in the pit lane, and I wonder whether the leaders will treat us to coming in at the same time uh, or whether they'll uh, leave us to uh, guess uh, where the other's going to come out. And there's a bit more of a gap that time through for uh, Warren Allen in 165. Uh, 1.25, that's the biggest gap he's had, probably down to the traffic they've seen on that last lap. Christian Walker is now 15 seconds ahead of anybody else in class two, so it's been a very impressive drive from him um, with Lucas Hutchings dropping away in his battle with James Brode, uh, with um, James Cayley. In sixth position, Jamie McHugh catching them. He's about a second quicker. He's just done a personal best, the 2.12.9. Into the pits. Oh, there is John Walker, but we think he might have pitted a lap early. And he's been in there for a little while, so these problems uh, persist with his boxer for the 59-year-old from Berkshire. In this Charles Ivy prepared Porsche, nine, uh, Porsche Boxster S. Nothing other than tyre pressure is really being checked at the moment, so that would suggest uh, perhaps whatever the problem was has been solved, and maybe he will get back out into the race. But a uh, long way down, more cars are pitting. You can see in the background there's a couple of others in, and including, I think, Dominic McGee has pitted. So Colin Tester's going to get in immediately, and he'll have a good 20 minutes to try and chase and see how high, high up the order he can get. Sylvester continues, so that, that uh, seems to have been fixed in the, uh, the 40 car. There are the leaders, they've just lapped him. They're 1.2 seconds apart. As Marcus said, that's the biggest gap we've seen all race. And uh, there is Colin Tester getting into the Super Tune Motorsport prepared Porsche Boxster that Dom McGee started. John Walker makes lots of noise as he goes out of the pits. That's a great noise, isn't it? It's just beautiful. A little bit more circumspect for the uh, next car to go out, which is Trevor Bale, who takes over from Paul Hicks. And having a look here at Chris Walker, the driver in third place, turns his way through Murray's. Really good drive this again from Chris Walker, who has been the man to beat in Class 2. He's won Class 2 four times this season. He's had a couple of seconds and a third as well and overall he's always been in the top four in all the seven races we've had he is there in third position and he came into the pit so chris walker the first of our front runners to pit out of third position there he is with the charles ivy team who run porsches at le mans in the 1970s and 80s high pressures being checked, potentially altered. Chris Walker, who is 19, is a university student. Started racing in a Mazda RX-8 before swapping uh, to this Boxster. And now racing solo this year, raced with his dad last year uh, with pretty good success. And it looks like he's a little bit quicker than his dad nowadays. And John Walker's not slow, so uh, that's yep. a pretty good feat for Chris. I think that often happens, doesn't it? There's uh, one of the 924s. That's Steve Potts, who's returning to 924s this weekend. There's the 115 car. That's Philip Waters, who is the uh, man behind the series and helps uh, to raise money for the campaign against living miserably charity. And he will hand over to Cole uh, Rosin. Van Howen in the background comes into the pits with the yellow supercharged 911. Chris Walker back into the race in 13th. All the cars ahead of him yet to pit. So we've had half the race. Pit window open for just over another five minutes. Watch for Callum Lockie in the 90, the 968, because that will go very quickly. I don't think Roger Coy's pitted yet, so no. that car stayed out a bit longer. There's that 911, the supercharged car, Marcus. 
Yeah, I think what will happen is that um, uh, Callum Lockie will be more interested in giving his customer as much of the race as he can. He'll just jump in at the end for a bit of fun. Yeah, Roger Coy is leading the class, the class three. Ah, has Warren Allen pitted now, does that mean? Yes, yes. So he's making yes. his way in. So James Coleman's carried on. So this is an important lap for Coleman uh, to be quick. And Warren Allen has got to uh, make sure this pit stop uh, really doesn't take much longer than 60 seconds. He can't be less, otherwise he'd get a penalty. It can't really afford to be much more either. That was a film back in the day, gone in 60 seconds. <laughs> But not less here, yeah, otherwise you're in trouble. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> what is the sanction if, they, if you stop short? Um, I think it's, uh, it's usually a drive through plus how many seconds you are yeah. um, short. So it's something fairly draconian, which it needs to be. I mean, you know, that's the rule, that's the rule. Uh, it's, it's even more than that uh, by the looks of it. It's a one minute stop go penalty, so yeah, you don't want to make that mistake. Uh, the Cayley family driver change. So Bill is getting into the car that James Cayley drove really well at the start. So they race against each other regularly, but getting the chance today to share a car. Which is always uh, good to see. It's got a good old bingle down the side of it. The, uh, that was a Cayley car. The Cayley car. Oh, this is Roger Coy coming in, isn't it? Yeah. Callum Lockie standing beside, ready to get in. He should be well used to driver changes. He's done a lot over his time. Mainline Timber. Porsche 968, number 90. And no one's helping Callum with his belt. He knows how to do that, doesn't he? Oh, now no, Roger might give him a, a hand as he's got to the other side. Mm -hmm. Roger Coy partnership. Partnership today includes Callum Lockie, the uh, Scott, long-time BRDC member. Racing Drivers Club, based at Silverstone. You can see the logo, the shield on the arm of his uh, overalls. Of course, with two driver teams, it's a bit more difficult to do your pit stop in 60 seconds other than somebody who's driving solo and just sits there for the pits and then gets back going. So uh, Warren Allen come out the pits in fourth. He is still ahead of Chris Walker by probably about a similar gap than it was. Lucas Hutchings has made his pit stop. Now, John Walker's been put back into seventh, but I thought he pitted a bit earlier than the pit window. But we, we shall see. Now, he's there in seventh, then, ahead of the Cayley car. But quite a lot of cars would have stopped in between mm. as well, so that might be a slightly misleading screen right now. Coleman is in, so this is the... He's got... Oh, that's on the, uh, the, the contact, isn't it? The dent there yes. the tyre mark on the front left corner. So this is going to be uh, where we find out... Uh, if it's going to be Coleman or Allen in the lead. SW uh, Engineering running this car, and they're uh, now trying to pull out the dent. Experienced uh, Porsche preparers. So where's Warren Allen? He's uh, not yet at Corum, I don't think. Is that him there? Yeah, he's going through Corum now. I think James Coleman might well have jumped him in the stalked. Well, he's got to come right down the pit lane on the pit uh, speed limit. And it's a long way down. And then he's got to get back up to speed. But I think he has got through, Marcus, ahead of Warren Allen, possibly. There you go. And there is Warren Allen over the line. Absolutely flat chat. And uh, he can see up ahead of him his quarry at uh, Riches. So we've got the opposite chase now, haven't we? We've got Coleman ahead of Allen for the uh, first time since the first race when it wasn't really a chase because there was quite a big gap between That's right. them. This is, this is Coleman's uh, sort of standing start lap, effectively. He's got to get back into the rhythm. And uh, Warren Allen has been going now. He's completed his uh, out lap, effectively. And um, he will be charging back towards that uh, gunmetal and Leighton House coloured car. There's the 25, one of the best liveries in the field. He leads because he hasn't stopped, but he'll do that this time, I should think. And he's going to get a penalty. He's going to get a five-second penalty for exceeding track limits. It's not overly subtle, that livery. Is it? <laughs> it's a sort of the look at mini anti-camouflage. Yes, and uh, therefore, if you are exceeding track limits, you're going to be noted. Exactly. So, I wonder, with these longer races, you're more likely to get caught as well, aren't you? With quite a lot more laps. 
Um, 21 there in the pits. That's uh, Andy Whiting in his Porsche 924S, making his racing debut, I think, this weekend. Driver from Northamptonshire. Here comes the 25 car. Just a few seconds before the pit window closed, so he timed out uh, OK. He's a team member having a quick chat. Everyone spread out, spread out the pit stops quite nicely, didn't they? So the pit lane wasn't overly busy at any one point. Yeah, that's good. It's always good to see, particularly um, somewhere like Santos. And of course, at Goodwood, it's absolutely desperate. It's a really, really narrow pit lane, which you'll see when you go there uh, next month for the revival. Yeah, absolutely. There's a bit more space here. Well, there wasn't in the past, was there? Because the, uh, the, the pit lane widened at one point, didn't it? So the start line got narrower rather well, than the back lane. Back in the day, of course, um, there wasn't a pit mm. wall. And uh, the, the non-championship Formula 1 races here in the 1960s, there was kind of a line of human arm co, mm. which was a bit sort of terrifying. Yeah. Ian Titchmarsh was telling me about the, uh, the Autosport 3-hour race he attended here when it was really, really wet. Oh, yes. Um, which I guess would have been a similar case back then, what it was there like. There was an incredibly foggy one, wasn't there, mm. when, um, when, when Jack Sears uh, managed to triumph, and uh, as a local farmer, he sort of skirted around the <laughs> fog, he made light of it, and uh, he was able to uh, close them all down. The lead gap's two tenths of a second again, so James mm. Coleman under pressure from Warren Allen. We're watching the battle where for fifth position because Lucas Hutchings under pressure from John Walker. Jamie McHugh has jumped them in the pit stops, so he's fourth, but has got a penalty, and John Walker's back to fifth, so he's got himself up ahead of Lucas Hutchings. Yes, um, Christian Walker is uh, only six seconds behind the leaders. Yeah, so that... Uh, really, really good uh, yeah. transition for him. He's pretty much 20 seconds ahead of the rest. So it's 47 that leads, James Coleman. Second is 165, Warren Allen. 37, Chris Walker. Fourth is 25, Jamie McHugh. Fifth is 50, Lucas Hutchings. Although now it's five, John Walker, because he's just got past. Seven is now 46, who's Michael Goodwin, taken over from his brother Gary. Eighth is 80, which is now Bill Cayley, who's taken over from uh, James. And James Brody is ninth. And tenth is 661 which is now Richard Neal, who's taken over from Andrew Juice, and that's a car that's come through the order a little bit. The quick cars to look out for, Callum Lockie is, is in 12th, Colin Tester is 15th, so see if they can progress into the top 10 in these final 13 minutes of the race. Here are the leaders, and James Coleman still just ahead of Warren Allen. So Allen caught that second or so pretty quickly, as you wondered if he might do on that first lap. Uh, Coleman was out of the pits. Now we, Coleman was never really able to pass Warren Allen on the track. We'll see if Warren Allen can do what James Coleman couldn't and get through so through quorum they come quite a lot of break in there partly because there's a very slow car on the right hand side of the circuit they have to get around which they have so they've lapped everybody up to about 16th position now but it's Coleman ahead can Warren Allen use his straight line speed to challenge up towards Richie's uh, as you were suggesting, Mark is quite little in it, I think. So no, Warren Allen has a look to the inside, but nothing uh, terribly serious. Well, he's three or four lengths down, isn't he? He's not quite close enough to consider it, but he is. When you come to a hairpin, you find a slower car ahead of you. Uh, Coleman, the leader, is getting a driving standards flag, so he can't afford to exceed track limits again. There's Allen behind. They pass the one car, I think, so that's Trevor Bale. It goes down another lap. So that's the other Cayman. Yeah, not uh, right on the face of these two. Down into the Agostini hairpin. Allen, a bit of a tighter line. But then runs a little bit wider, perhaps because of that. Uh, and their, their best laps were a couple of tenths apart, and their last laps were uh, one hundredth of a second apart. <laughs> and uh, up a couple of seconds slower than they were earlier, perhaps because of the traffic. But still a bit quicker than Chris Walker is, seven seconds behind, who's 20 ahead of Jamie McHugh, who's being caught rapidly by John Walker. John Walker's just on a PB, a 2.11.98, quicker than the leaders did on that particular lap. Callum Lockie has just got the Class 3 lead away from Daniel uh, Crago. He was six seconds quicker on that lap, was Lockie, than uh, Crago was to grab the Class 3 lead. Now, is this a car in the pit lane? Ah, it's leaking fluid, isn't it? Is that brake fluid? 
uh, possibly from where it's coming from. That's the free boxster, which was Gary Martin at the wheel. Yeah, maybe a pipe split. It's everywhere. Look, it's all, all around the wheel. And, uh, that's not going to be going any further in this race. <laughs> so the race leaders come in out of the final corner and towards the line with 10 minutes to go. So we should squeeze uh, five more laps in, I think. And it's still James Coleman who is ahead. Up towards Richie as they go. And Warren Allen, a bit closer, looked at the inside, but braked earlier. They've got a slower car to lap again, going That's down towards the hair. It's got a 924 they catch, isn't it? The white 924. They get passed out pretty quickly. Slot up the inside. Then Warren Allen tries to move back to the racing line to get the optional uh, position for going through and out the corner. The quickest drivers on the circuit now are McHugh and Walker in fourth and fifth. They're in the 11s. Well, the leaders on that lap were in the 13s, but they, they're 25 seconds behind. And uh, all that could be traffic induced and be involved in this battle as well. I'm not sure if the optimal lines are being taken uh, by these two. They're not bothered by uh, the lap times at this point. No, I think they might be in about, uh, what, about five minutes time when it boils down to the nitty gritty of the last mm. couple of laps. Yeah, that's for sure. 42 goes up down. That is Dan, uh, Darren Constance, 924. Quite a healthy Porsche 924 championship at one point, wasn't there? Absolutely, and uh, a few have run in historic um, uh, races as well in uh, 70s road sports. Warren, uh, Warren Allen looked like he was going to challenge. So if we can pause it. Here we go, yeah, here he comes to the outside. He had a better run, he's fully alongside, but he's, oh, he's got a big slide there. He wasn't fully committed, I don't think, to going around the outside of James Coleman, who hangs on. That, that was, in, was, that was into Brundle, wasn't it? That's right, that was possibly the biggest challenge we've seen in this race from Warren Allen. Yeah, they have one apiece so far in the sprint races. All to play for over the remaining seven and three quarter minutes. Warren Allen looking really menacing now. And he ducks up the inside, but the gap is closed. And that's compromised themselves coming out. I think there was a bit of a fumble over gears there. And uh, it looks like the lead has changed because uh, James Coleman was slow out of uh, Murray's. And uh, Warren Allen's got ahead. Yeah, it got a bit clumsy, didn't they? They, they were almost stopped as they went through Murray. So both on a, an awkward line. But as uh, Mark has said, Warren Allen is through into the lead. But I think James Coleman's going to fight back immediately. Looks to the inside for Wilson. It's, this is uh, where he's stronger, I think. Through the slower corners. Warren Allen's a little wider. But uh, now James Coleman's got the wake-up call. He is pushing on to try and get that move back after losing it. Uh, with that uh, mistake, perhaps because of the slower speed, he was in the wrong gear uh, for the final corner. What he can't afford is more contact. Otherwise, the sword of Damocles may fall. He's run very wide there, hasn't he? I think uh, Agostini. He's got a handling issue. If he braked a bit late, um, but yeah, it's only ended up very or wide. Just out of um, out of tyres. Yeah, it could well be because the lap times haven't been as close uh, to their fast laps. They were four seconds off on the last lap. That was partially because of the uh, the last corner. He's trying to hang on, is uh, James Coleman. And, and sliding around is Warren Allen in front. So, yeah, wouldn't be surprised if uh, the tyre grip is going. These are on treaded tyres. And there's a lot of power to put through the yeah. uh, wheels. Kayleigh in uh, the 80 has come up into seventh place. I had a good win that lap. That's a change. Slower lap for Goodwin, a 2.16 to a, two, a long 2.13. Yeah, Michael Goodwin, I think, now taken over from Gary. I'm not sure if Michael's quite as quick. Ooh, running up over the kerb at the um, at the bomb hole. Alan and Colin behind him. And uh, up in it's the 30 inside them, isn't it? That's Clayton Sampson. Yeah, 968. And this uh, could hold Coleman up through the final corner. But a bit more daylight between Warren Allen and James Coleman with uh, three to go, I think. Three laps to go at the end of this. And the gap, which was four tenths of a second, is out to 
1.1 seconds. And that was a better lap for Warren Allen, a 2.11, as uh, Darren Constant in 42 had stopped on the track at Bomhall, which is... That's a bit concerning, isn't it? Yeah, you know, I wonder if he can't get back going, whether that might uh, bring an endy, early close to the race. Because I can't see they want to leave that car there for another five minutes. Oh, this is a battle for fourth. John Walker's on the inside of Jamie McHugh. McHugh, who has got a five-second penalty, so it's uh, not really going to be a battle in reality. Academic, isn't it? But uh, it's an uh, enjoyable one to watch as John Walker slices up the inside of Jamie McHugh. John Walker, in this part of the race, has consistently been the quickest driver in the 2.11s, impressively. And he grabs fourth position then, ahead of 25, Jamie McHugh, who's been the standout driver, really, from the back of the grid. Carved his way through in the first part. And has kept up good pace in the second half. Down into the Agostini hairpin. Walker ahead. Long way behind his son, 17 seconds, so he's not going to get a class win today, John Walker. Uh, John has ha hasn't won the class yet this year. He's had four podiums. There's uh, Jamie McHugh, who's having his first run in this Boxster. Raced a class three car previously. Had a better result this year of a fourth. Well, he's uh, just lost that position on this lap. There's the class four leader, Steve Potts, in 155. Now, Steve Potts, who does a bit of historic racing as well, I think he's raced at Goodwood a few times, in an, uh, I think in Austin A35. So, obviously, likes cars that don't have huge amounts of power. And he's got uh, Warren Allen, the leader, diving down the inside. Uh, Corman James Coleman's re-caught the leader. Yes, he has, and uh, that's interesting because the leader Warren Allen had to slow for the Pops car. Nothing wrong with that. Checkered flag has gone out. I has think. it? Although I think the leader's missed it, but uh, the flag has gone out uh, with that car off. So although they haven't seen the flag, Warren Allen is the race winner in the third of the Carmel Porsche Trophy race here at Snetterton by 75 hundredths of a second, three quarters of a second between him and James Coleman. So it's been super competitive between those two Caymans all weekend. Chris Walker third and the class two winner in his box up. Where's John Walker? He's slow across the line, which means he has dropped. Where's John uh, Walker? Sure, that's him across the line there. Yeah, now, yes. now he's shown. But yeah, he did keep within five seconds of Jamie McHugh, but he was slow.